Joe Biden speaking to union workers and has already somewhat made reference to what everybody else seems to have been talking about for the last several days. Take a listen. And uh, I just want you to know I had permission to hug Lonnie. I mean, we, we, we had permission. I, I uh, all wrong, but, but it's up to By the way, he gave me permission to touch him. I, so there were two references there. The first one, as I understand it, was a reference to the union leader uh, who had introduced the former vice president. Then also saying again he had permission uh, to hug the child that you saw with him there on stage. I want to bring back in Nia Malika Henderson. There was question about whether or not this would be addressed, and if so, how it would be addressed. Uh, making light of it uh, sort of, I don't know, leaves me scratching my head. Yeah, it kind of undoes uh, the video, right, and the sort of work that he did in putting this issue uh, in, in a different light, right? Uh, the video, he basically says uh, this is a serious issue and that people have a right to their personal space, basically parroting uh, what Nancy Pelosi said. So here, uh, I think in many ways he undoes that by making light of it and, and, and making it out to be uh, one big joke. This is Joe Biden, right? I mean, he keeps uh, stepping in. And if you think about uh, what has happened over over this last week, really, because that's when the Lucy Flores story broke. Mm -hmm. uh, they have had, I think this is the fifth time they've addressed it, right? Uh, there were two statements from his spokesperson, then there were the two statements uh, from Vice President Joe Biden, the final one, which was as close to a, an apology as I think we're going to get from, from Joe Biden, and this one, uh, which essentially uh, makes light of it and, and probably puts him a step backward, yeah. uh, you know, based on where he was. I guess that was on Wednesday. So. Yeah, I mean, this um, well, to your point, too, you know, as you said earlier, just uh, just in the hour that it was the right. non apology, the sorry, not sorry with the video. Exactly. He got flack for that. So then to come out and have this tone deaf joke. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, it makes you wonder who he's listening to. Yeah, and, and, and does he listen to anybody? Is there anybody around him with any sort of sophistication w with this issue in terms of how to handle it? I mean, we knew this was going to be a question for Joe Biden. Just w in terms of him him running, they clearly were cla uh, caught flat-footed with Lucy Flores' uh, mm -hmm. allegations, which, again, weren't about hugging. It was about uh, him smelling her hair and kissing mm -hmm. her uh, on, on the head. And, and, and so there he is, again, making light of it. What's your reaction to President Trump t uh, taunting you on Twitter? What do you have to say to him? Well, it doesn't surprise me. He doesn't have time to do his job. Um, but uh, look, it's everybody knows who Donald Trump is. Um, so I don't have to say anything more, I don't think. Mr. Vice President, President there was do you think you should come forward and say they felt uncomfortable in your presence? Say again? You expect a lot more people. Well, to come I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised, but I've had hundreds and hundreds of people contact me and who I don't know and, you know, say the exact opposite. Look, um, it, is, uh, um, it is important that um, I and everyone else is aware that any woman or man who feels uncomfortable should have the right to just say, hey, I was uncomfortable with that. Or hopefully we'll get to the point even before and they have to say, I'm uncomfortable with that. No matter what, and uh, and and, and I, I I really do understand it, um, and uh, so. But it's you know, one of the things that, uh, um, like for example, what made me say it. I, I wasn't joking. The president of the union put his arms around me. Well, that's how it's always been in covered me a long time. You know, that's how people react, and. Uh, but, but do you think you owe these women a direct apology who have come forward so far? Oh, well, look, I, the fact of the matter is I made it clear that if I made anyone feel comfortable, I feel badly about that. That was never my intention, ever, ever, ever. But there's some women who want to hear directly, I am sorry. Are you sorry for the way that you I'm sorry I didn't understand more. I'm not sorry for any of my intentions. I'm not sorry for anything that I have ever done. I've never been disrespectful intentionally to a man or a woman. Um, I, you know, it's, that's not the reputation I had since I was in high school, for God's sake. Mr. Vice but, President, you've always said you're not changing your brand, you're not wearing any funny hats. Is this whole episode of the past week, is this going to change how you campaign? Well, I think it's going to have to change somewhat how I campaign. It's just like, you know, the new thing is selfies. Everybody wonders why I take the selfie. 
so they don't put it on Instagram, you know, so, so it's not put on, I mean, if I had the camera, at least I make sure it's a photo and I'm not doing something else because you have to wonder, you know, what, what anything's being used for. And so it's all changed and it's, and it's changed even with you guys, come on. You're, each of you of, uh, are aware of it in your personal relationship it changes. And it's not a bad thing. It's, it's a new thing, it's important, and I'm sure it's going to take a while for it to settle out. But it's settled out for me. <laughs> when will you be entering the 2020 race? I'm told by the lawyers that I've got to be careful what I say so that I don't start uh, a clock ticking uh, and change my status. But uh, it is, I am very close to making the decision to stand before you all relatively soon. Um, How so I, I, I think Within weeks? I think days, I, weeks? What's the holdup? What's the holdup? Putting everything together, man. <laughs> Putting everything together. Even if I knew for certain that I was going to run for president back in Thanksgiving, my intention from the beginning is if I were to run, it would be the last person to announce. I, uh, and uh, so if everybody else their day, then I get a shot, and then we off to the races. Did the lack of a right, formal you. operation this thanks week everyone. make your response trickier? No. Have you Kane is qualified to be on the Federal Reserve? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Herman Kane is qualified to be on the Federal Reserve. I, I would pick someone else. Mr. Vice President, you. you said two Sir. weeks ago that you were the most progressive person in the Democratic Party. There's a lot of candidates in this race. No, I said liberal. I didn't say progressive. No, you said progressive. I said progressive. Well, here's the point. That's changing, too. For my whole career, I wish I had been labeled in Delaware the seven times I ran as a moderate. I was never labeled as a moderate. If you look at my record with the ACLU, look at my record with all of the traditional liberal organizations. I have never walked away from. I, I'm not. I'm not sure when everybody else came out and said they're for gay marriage. I'm not sure when everyone else came out and talked about a lot of things I've talked about. But my point is, is the definition of progressive now seems to be changing. It is. Are you a socialist? Well, that, that's a real progressive. Uh, or you believe in, you know, whatever. I mean, so I, I was talking about up until this last time around, uh, the traditional judgments of whether or not you were, quote, a liberal, uh, was whether or not what, 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 what your positions on race were, on women, what your position on, on LGBT community, what your positions on civil liberties. You know, I'll stack my record on those things against anybody who's ever run, who is running now, or who will run. The former Vice President Joe Biden speaking with reporters outside of a union meeting here in Washington, D.C., ending with an I'm an Obama Biden Democrat, and I'm proud of it. The Vice President holding court there for several minutes, the topic of most of the conversation, uh, the controversy over several women who have come forward recently and said that the former Vice President made them uncomfortable by touching them, putting his hands on their shoulders, touching their arms, in one case kissing the back of a head. Those women say they feel uncomfortable. The Vice President is saying there that he gets it, that he will be more respectful, uh, that he feels badly, and that he's sorry if anyone was offended by his conduct, but also saying repeatedly that never did he have any ill intent in showing affection to anyone there. Let's talk about it around the table. Uh, answering questions after, if you're with us at the top of the hour, the former Vice President at the top of his speech made what he thought to be a joke. He embraced a union president, a man, walked over to the microphone and said, I asked permission beforehand. Now, I've watched the Vice President in dozens of these union gatherings. They do hug, they do embrace. He has known them for years. They are friendly, they are supportive. The, the, the joke about it seemed really off tone, tone deaf. Uh, I'm being kind when I say that. He was trying to say after, come on, that's not a joke. I'm just being familiar here. Uh, what you saw there was actually one of the strengths of Joe Biden. Standing there, holding his own with reporters. He's conversational. He's friendly. He says he relishes the debate once he jumps into the race. What else? I think it was Eliana who said this. He, he just It's the discipline question. It's, it's a question of um, this political tone deafness, which is exactly what you said the last time we talked about this a few minutes ago. Yeah, that's a Joe Biden who would probably do very well on the campaign trail. It's just whether he can help himself from these other just Bidenisms. <laughs> well, if, he, if he hadn't said something that sounds tone deaf, at least to some people, I suspect to many women, especially the women 
who have been in the news in recent days, uh, I bet that they at least found that toned up. If he hadn't done that, if he had given a speech and then come out and talked to reporters like that and said, yeah, I feel really badly about it. Yeah, I'm going to behave differently. Yeah, if anyone took offense, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I never meant it. He says all the way back to high school. You could see how passionate he is about this. He says, you know, God damn it, all the way back to high school. I'm a respectful person. Then we'd be having a different conversation today. He was joking around on stage, but it just wasn't funny. It didn't land the way he intended. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, if coming out and talking to reporters is one of his strengths, why did he wait a week to do it? Um, right. There was a week of this silence where his campaign was putting out these uh, statements that were ineffective, and ultimately he put out uh, a, a video with uh, poor production value that lo it looked like it was shot on a GoPro that also didn't quite seem to do the job. And so he really let other people control the narrative for a week, I think to his detriment. And finally, when he did get out and talk to reporters just now, he handled it very well, but that's something he should have done uh, seven days ago.